Raider. Raider is indicted on counts one, two, and three. <coughs> in 1928, he became Chief of Naval Command. And in 1935, Oberbefehl's Harbor, der Kriegsmarine, OKM. In 1939, Hitler made him Gross Admiral. He was a member of the Reich Defense Council. On the 30th of January, 1943, Dönitz replaced him at his own request and he became Admiral Inspector of the Navy, a nominal title. Crimes against peace. In the 15 years he commanded it, Breda built and directed the German Navy. He accepts full responsibility until retirement in 1943. He admits the Navy violated the Versailles Treaty, insisting that it was a matter of honor for every man to do so, and alleges that the violations were for the most part minor and Germany built less than her allowable strength. These violations, as well as those of the Anglo-German Naval Agreement of 1935, have already been discussed elsewhere in this judgment. Breda received the directive of the 24th of June, 1937, from von Blomberg, requiring special preparations for war against Austria. He was one of the five leaders present at the Hosbach Conference of the 5th of November, 1937. He claims Hitler merely wished by this conference to spur the army to faster rearmament, insists he believed the questions of Austria and Czechoslovakia would be settled peacefully as they were, and points to the new naval treaty with England which had just been signed. He received no orders to speed construction of U-boats, indicating that Hitler was not planning war. Raider received directives on Fall Grimm and the directives on Fall Weiss, beginning with that of April the 3rd, 1939. The latter directed uh, the Navy to support the army by intervention from the sea. He was also one of the few chief leaders present at the meeting of the 23rd of May, 1939. He attended the Opus Salzburg briefing of the 22nd of August, 1939. The conception of the invasion of Norway first arose in the mind of Reda and not that of Hitler. Despite Hitler's desire, as shown by his directive of October 1939, to keep Scandinavia neutral. The Navy examined the advantages of naval bases there as early as October. Admiral Karls originally suggested to Rada the desirable aspects of bases in Norway. A questionnaire dated the 3rd of October 1939, which sought comments on the desirability of such bases, was circulated within SKL. On the 10th of October, Raider discussed the matter with Hitler. His war diary entry for that day says, Hitler intended to give the matter consideration. A few months later, Hitler talked to Raider, Quisling, Keitel and Jodl. OKW began its planning and the naval war staff worked with OKW staff officers. Raider received Keitel's directive for Norway on the 27th of January 1940 and a subsequent directive of the 1st of March signed by Hitler. Raider defends his actions on the ground it was a move to forestall the British. It is not necessary again to discuss this defense, which the tribunal has heretofore treated in some detail, concluding that Germany's invasion of Norway and Denmark was aggressive war. In a letter to the Navy, Raider said, the operations of the Navy in the occupation of Norway will for all time remain the great contribution of the Navy to this war. Raider received the directives, including the innumerable postponements for the attack in the West. In a meeting of 18th of March, 1941, with Hitler, he urged the occupation of all Greece. He claims this was only after the British had landed and Hitler had ordered the attack and points out the Navy had no interest in Greece. He received Hitler's directive on Yugoslavia. Raider endeavored to dissuade Hitler from embarking upon the invasion of the USSR. In September 1940, he urged on Hitler an aggressive Mediterranean policy as an alternative to an attack on Russia. On the 14th of November 1940, he urged the war against England as our main enemy and that submarine and naval air force construction be continued. He voiced serious objections against the Russian campaign before the defeat of England, according to notes of the German naval war staff. He claims his objections were based on the violation of the non-aggression pact, as well as strategy. But once the decision had been made, 
he gave permission six days before the invasion of the Soviet Union to attack Russian submarines in the Baltic Sea within a specified warning area and defends this action because these submarines were snooping on German activities. It is clear from this evidence that Radar participated in the planning and waging of aggressive war. <coughs> war crimes. Radar is charged with war crimes on the high seas. The Athenia, an unarmed British passenger liner, was sunk on the 3rd of September 1939 while outward bound to America. The Germans, two months later, charged that Mr. Churchill deliberately sank the Athenia to encourage American hostility to Germany. In fact, it was sunk by the German U-boat 30. Radar claims that an inexperienced U-boat commander sank it in mistake for an armed merchant cruiser, that this was not known until the U-30 returned several weeks after the German denial, and that Hitler then directed the Navy and Foreign Office to continue denying it. Radar denied knowledge of the propaganda campaign attacking Mr. Churchill. The most serious charge against Radar is that he carried out unrestricted submarine warfare, including sinking of unarmed merchant ships, of neutrals, non-rescue, and machine gunning of survivors, contrary to the London Protocol of 1936. The Tribunal makes the same fighting on Radar on this charge as it did as to Dönitz, which has already been announced until 30th of January 1943, when Radar retired. Commando order of the 18th of October 1942, which did not expressly apply to naval warfare, uh, which expressly did not apply to naval warfare, was transmitted by the naval war staff to the lower naval commanders, with the direction it should be distributed orally by flotilla leaders and section commanders to their subordinates. Two commandos were put to death by the Navy and not by the SD at Bordeaux on the 10th December 1942. The comment of the naval war staff was that this was in accordance with the Führer's special order, but is nevertheless something new in international law since the soldiers were in uniform. Rader admits he passed the order down through the chain of command and he did not object to Hitler. Conclusion. The tribunal finds that Rader is guilty on counts one, two, and three.